and the GT3 Porsches are there as well. Welcome to Le Mans for the 67th running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the Grand Prix of Endurance that runs around this famous 13.6 kilometer course here in north central France. Just a few minutes to go now before the cars are finally lined up to set off around the 24 hours. The fun fair, the Hawaiian Tropic girls, the drivers have been paraded in the new open Audi coupes and here on the front of the grid is Martin Brundle, the British driver making his annual return to motorsport and time off from his television Formula One duties in order to drive the lead Toyota. Alongside him, Thierry Boutsen, the incredibly experienced Belgian Grand Prix winner, will have first slot in the number two Toyota. Inside one of the fabulous Mercedes CLRs, the new, lower, shapelier Mercedes for 1999. Michele Alboreto, a former Le Mans winner and multiple Grand Prix winner, in the elegant little Audi Coupe, the fabulous Ford-engined Paynoz, front-engine monster, which has already earned its way into the heart of the fans here at Le Mans. That's Johnny O'Connell, due to drive with Jan Magnussen. The Nissans are here as well, with a rather curious-nosed spider format of car, with Eric Coma due to take the first stint in the lead car. Audi Sport UK have built a coupe as opposed to the open Audi, and that will be started by Andy Wallace, a very experienced British trio there of Wallace, Weaver and McCarthy. Yannick Dalmas here, already a three-time winner at Le Mans, prepares to start the second of the elegant open BMW V12 coupes. And this has to be the likely class winner in the GTS second, more production-based class, the Oreca Chrysler Viper to be driven at the start by Olivier Beretta. There are Porsche's 911 GTS cars as well, up against the phalanx of Chrysler Vipers, and Jean-Pierre Jarrier, the 52-year-old French Grand Prix driver of the 1970s, has to be there as a quickie. So, Toyota at the front, up there with Mercedes, BMW, and the open Audis, and just in the top 10, the first of the Nissan R391s. The Lolo with the Judd Formula One engine has been quick, as has the Ferrari 333 SP. There are private BMWs. The Courages, as ever at Le Mans, a possibility as a threat for a top six slot. We're going to be able to look down from the Goodyear balloon throughout the race, and here's our first shot, showing how crowded the grid can be. And it's the green flag. The cars have set off, warming up the tyres as they set off away from Tert Rouge towards the beginning of the famous Mulsanne Strait. Here we see them coming into the slightly banked corner of Indianapolis and coming on out to Arnage. After the right-hander at Arnage is now the fastest part of the course because of the chicanes now in the Mulsanne Strait. And we'll see the uh, certainly Mercedes and Toyotas touching 220 miles an hour. They then wind their way back through the Porsche curves and up to the start line and straight away it's go. It's four o'clock on Saturday. The Le Mans 24 hours gets underway and straight into the expected lead goes Martin Brundle followed by Thierry Boutsen with Bernd Schneider in close pursuit. Schneider's Mercedes has the yellow and there's a spinner straight away. Mr. Kato from Japan in the private Go Motorsports 98 BMW has not made himself very popular. Putting Johnny O'Connell in the Paynos, the second Paynos onto the gravel. Nearly, nearly Oh dear, taking up one of the Courages. So, on to the Mulsanne. It's Toyota, Toyota. Bernd Schneider's Mercedes has the yellow wing mirrors, always identifiable. And here we are on board in the second Mercedes with Christophe Bouchou coming up to the chicane, that was a left-hand chicane at Mulsanne, underneath the famous Dunlop Bridge at the beginning of lap two. Martin Brundle leads from Thierry Boutsen. A glorious day here at Le Mans. And already Brundle is right down there to 3.37. That's only fractions away from his qualifying time. Toyota mechanics looking very confident indeed. 
And here is David Bratham in the number 12 Paynos with that wonderful throaty roar. That's Yannick Dalmas in the second of the two BMW coupes, lying back in about eighth place at this stage. That will be a consistent car, and followed by the Japanese-driven Toyota. Somebody already in trouble here. And that was the Montero Brothers Porsche, and here we are on board with Ukio Katayama making his first stop. Katayama brings the number three Toyota in for a straightforward refueling. It's one of the British Audis popping in in front of him, a very crowded pit lane as always at Le Mans. And Katayama stays in the car and pulls away. There seems to be trouble here already with the British Audi. This is the John Wickham run car. And on board in one of the Oreca Vipers, we'll see which one that is. That is Beretta's, the class leading car. Being lapped already by the Paynors. The Paynors lapped in practice at 3 minutes 33 and the Viper at about 4 minutes. That'll be about their race pace around the 4 minute mark. A refueling stop for Thierry Bootsen. Fuel only there, though you can see the brake cooling fans that Toyota are applying and blasts away, but be careful in the pit lane. And that's Steve Soper. Steve Soper spinning, just what we were saying to be careful at the exit. Steve Soper has spun the private Thomas Bashero 98 BMW on the way into the pit lane. That'll embarrass him. Michele Alboreto sets off again in the open Audi. And Martin Brundle makes his scheduled stop. Now this is a tense time. Brundle wants to keep the lead. He wants to keep his track position. And in at the same time is the second of the Mercedes. That's Christoph Bouchou. And Bouchou is staying in his car. The Toyota pulls out and nearly gets chopped up by Bernd Schneider, who is determined to get the lead of this race. And in the pit lane, Schneider has taken the lead. That will not please Martin Brundle as his teammate sweeps by in second place.